Hey, it's Ken from the Oregon Club, and uh, welcome to week two of Inside the Flock, brought to you by Ambient IT Solutions. We're two weeks into this football season. Uh, two wins, two great wins, one over Stanford and Washington State. Moving ahead, looking towards UCLA this weekend. And today, uh, we get to bring you offensive coordinator, Joe Moorhead, new to the staff this year. And uh, boy, if you've watched the games, you know his offense is explosive and can't wait to talk to him and uh, find out all about uh, what he's got planned for the upcoming weeks. But first, we're gonna go to Alex Forsyth, junior offensive lineman for the Ducks. Well, a quick uh, evaluation, just the offense as a whole, these first two games. Yeah, you know, I've been uh, pleased with, with what we've been able to do the first, uh, first few games. Definitely, had a, I felt like we've had a balanced attack, um, passing and rushing wise. Um, you, know, you can never be satisfied because the second you get satisfied is when you uh, when you start doing not as not as well as you'd uh, you'd hope. So we're we're always looking to get better. There's a lot of things we can improve on. Um, definitely, obviously the turnovers and stuff we we gotta clean up and all that stuff. And you know it's uh it's it's been it's been fun getting used to this new offense. Um, you know not having spring ball or really a whole lot of time in the summer. Um, and then just getting those. I think we we were only able to have. I don't know what the NCAA, I think it was 14 like fall camp practices, 14 or 15 fall camp practices. And not all those are full pads. There's, there's some walkthroughs um, and all that stuff. So, you know, getting a whole new offense um, installed, that's, that's not easy because we only had, I think we only had four uh, spring ball practices. So that you had that week and then you had the few weeks in, in October um, for fall camp, you know, and, and we, we were meeting on Zoom and stuff to, uh, to install, but it's been, it's been a fun, Fun, uh, uh, fun time these past two weeks. You know, seeing uh, seeing what we can do offensively, and you know, it's it's really promising, and it's it's exciting what uh, Coach Moorhead has been doing doing with us. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, a lot of fun. I told him the headline on NBC Sports this morning when I went to it was the fun is back in the Oregon offense thanks to Joe Moorhead. I know he's probably not sitting in the office going, okay, let's just have fun, uh, you know. But man, it, it's just it's great to watch, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It's a it's a fun offense because we're uh, you know we're making it fun um, by by putting up some points. So yeah. What about this? You guys are five brand new linemen there, so you not only instilling a new offense, not only uh, you know short on practices, but five new guys there. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, uh, we we like to say we, we have six starters because we got guys rotating in and stuff. So it's, I mean, all the guys um, that are rotating in have, have played a little bit in the past. Um, but, you know, Stanford was the first game we, we had all started. You know, nobody had started a game before then. Um, so, you know, going into a season like that, having such a great offensive line before us, um, it's a really high standard that we got to keep striving uh, to achieve. We're not there yet. Um, but, you know, I, th I think we've seen improvements from week one to week two. Um, and, you know, we just got to improve every every single week. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely definitely new, but not, not new for us because all the guys that have been playing right now, we've been with the twos. And, you know, when we were freshmen and so on scout team, we had been playing with each other, um, just not really on the field, obviously, uh, playing against other teams. So we, we, there's definitely chemistry there. Um, and I think the chemistry that we built over the net, the past two weeks, just in, I think we've had like 137, 136 offensive snaps. And I think, um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of chemistry built up from, from just those, that few sample size. Um, so I think we've made better strides. Um, we just got to keep on, keep on improving every single practice and every single week. You, you touched on it, but how much did it help to have the, the guys that were in front of you for, for a couple of years that just, you know, they were there every snap. Um, and you guys obviously were, were, were practicing with them. Uh, you, you learned from them, I'm sure. But how much did it help to have those guys, uh, you know, ahead of you? Yeah, you know, it helped a lot. And I, I knew when I, when I signed here that there was a lot of talent um, here. And that's, that's one of the main reasons why I came here is because, you know, it's Coach Cristobal, and he was the offensive line coach when I when I was first um, committed and throughout my first year. So he's he's the big reason why I committed here is offensive line development. Um, and you can see all the guys that are playing in the NFL right now, um, whether they're undrafted, whether on practice squad, whether they got drafted, whatever it is, 
you know, they're, they're achieving their dreams. And, you know, you got to see a unit last year that was, I, in my opinion, that was the best unit in the country, um, that unit last year, the 2019 um, Oregon offensive line. And, you know, you got to see guys that had Shane, I think Shane and Throck, I think had 52. I, I don't want to misspeak here because I, I think it was 52 straight like career starts. So that they played a lot of snaps here. And, um, you know, it's really admirable to see those guys. And they, they were the first ones at practice. Um, you know, all, all six of those guys that, that played last year and that started, uh, you know, they, they were grinders and they, they didn't miss practice. They didn't miss snaps. There's, they, they were some tough dudes. So it's a, uh, it's definitely a high standard to live up to, but I'm so glad we got to see how it should be done um, as an off- how, how offensive line should look um, in college football. And, you know, it's, it's a high standard, like I said, but we're, we're fighting to achieve that. And we, we've seen the blueprint with the guys before us. So yeah. we go attack it and, you know, try to live up to that standard. And so I looked at the, the teams that recruited you, almost everybody in the Pac-12, uh, as well as Michigan, some, some, <laughs> there's a good list there. So why, you mentioned a little bit, but why, why Oregon? You know, I mean, obviously it's the home, hometown school for me. Um, I grew up an Oregon fan. Um, I've always dreamed of, they, they were the only offer I, I really wanted um, coming out of high school. And, you know, I think it was, I really just honestly, once they first offered me, that, that was the only offer I wanted. I wanted to commit right there and just, I didn't really care about the whole recruiting stuff. I don't really pay attention to the, the stars or, the, how many offers people are people are getting or and all that stuff's great for uh, like if, if people if people love to look at that that's awesome but I, I was just kind of focused on getting this one offer um, from Oregon and I remember you know just staying up late just hoping that it would come in and you, you know every game I was just uh, every game I played I'd put together a highlight tape try to send it out um, to as many coaches as I could um, but really the only one I wanted was the Oregon one. So I think growing up a fan, um, coming to Oregon games when I was a kid and, you know, Coach Cristobal coming into Oregon, that was that was a big – I mean, I was already committed before that, but I think that was a huge a huge uh, upgrade and stuff. And that was that, that was awesome to see um, Coach Cristobal come here. And, you know, it's, it's been awesome playing for him. Um, having an O-line coach as your head coach um, is, is really something, something special. So you really have – you really have three offensive line coaches. You have Coach Cristobal, Coach Mirabal, and then Coach Terry, um, who's our graduate assistant. So you got three three guys that know offensive line play really well, um, coaching you every day, and they don't let anything slide. Um, and something we always say is nothing but your very best will be good enough. So I think that's that's something that they they coach us by, and that's a uh, that's that's definitely a reason uh, why I wanted to come here is to be uh, just develop and you know be the best player I can be. So there was no chance that big purple W you, that letter came. You weren't going there. No. That a boy. No, always wanted to go to Oregon. Good, good call. Hey, okay, so I heard from a, 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 a acquaintance or a friend of yours that while you're a, you're a football player, obviously uh, that's your thing now, at one point it was basketball with you. And uh, you were obviously uh, had some talent there, but you, you, did, you, did you think early on that basketball might be your sport? Yeah, you know, I think growing up, uh, my, my dad loved playing basketball, and so he, he was the reason why I started playing. And uh, you know, I, I was, I wasn't always like the biggest, I was, I was usually the tallest, but I wasn't usually the heaviest, um, like growing up a little bit. So then once I started to gain a little bit more weight, I was like, I don't know, football, I, I couldn't choose football or basketball, which one I wanted, but you know, as a kid, I think you got to play all the sports, just, I mean, not all of them, but you got to play multiple sports if you want to, you can't just have some kid just, just want to, or just have them single in and focus on one sport. So I think, my mom did a really good job of letting me play basketball, football, whatever I wanted to do. Um, I think it once I got to high school, I was like, oh, I love basketball. Like, I, and I just kind of flipped back and forth. Um, once I got to high school, um, I started to beef up a little bit and, you know, start growing a little bit more. Um, but still, I was like, I don't know if I want to play football or basketball. And then our basketball team at Westland was the best in the state for like four or five years um, straight. We won state championships. So, that would have been a tough team to make varsity and play on. So I, I played until my sophomore year. And then I remember one, one of my football teammates dads came up to me and basically told me, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if basketball is for you. I, th- I think you got a future in football. Um, and, you know, at the time I was like, oh, I don't know. That, that kind of hurt to hear that basketball is not my thing. But, you know, in the end, I, I, I thank him for saying that because that really put it in perspective. I was like, you know, in reality, I'm not going to have a future in basketball, but, 
I think if I really focus on football, I, I can really do something with it. So I'm excited that I that I ended up following his advice um, and just focusing on football from from my sophomore year on. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good decision, huh? <laughs> how did playing basketball? How, how has it helped your uh, your football by by playing so much basketball? Yeah, I think basketball. I think there's a lot of transitional skills. Um, you know, I definitely think, especially with offensive linemen um, and the way I had to play for basketball, I wasn't going to be a guy that was like a perimeter three point shooter. Believe it or not, I was I was more the rebounder, the guy who kind of you know, got dirty down, like down in the, down in the box. Um, and, you know, just, just, ha I was the guy that had to get the rebounds, um, the second chance points, all that stuff. So you really, I think you learn a lot of footwork. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and, you know, we still, before COVID and stuff, we'd, we'd be able to go to the, the rec and play a little bit in the off season, um, play a little bit of basketball or whenever we could play some pickup games. Um, so that's when you see who the best the best basketball players on the team are. Um, but I think I think definitely footwork wise, um, it helped me a lot, especially positioning um, down in the in the low post. Um, I think that's something that I really kind of transitioned uh, over to football. You were you were practicing at multiple positions. Now that we're you know the, the season's going to be short and and you know every snap counts. Are you still doing that? Are you just taking? Uh, taking the snaps at center what, what are, are the guys still you know switching around positions yeah I mean every, every day there's a new new chart on what position you're going to play um, for the day it, it switches every single every single day and honestly every single rack or, or team period it's it's a little bit different um, depending on what position you're at for that for that period um, but I think that's helped us a lot because it gives you position flexibility um, on the line and it allows you to get the best five guys, six guys on the field um, at one time. And, you know, I think it's, you've seen guys on our team play, go from left tackle to right tackle, from right guard to left guard. Um, you know, that's not easy to do, um, especially if, if you weren't going to practice it, but we practice that way. So it's, it's become more natural, I think for everybody. But once again, that's not as easy as people think. So I think, like I know Ryan Walk and George Moore have both been going from, George has been going from left tackle to right tackle, and Ryan's been going from uh, right guard to left guard, all that stuff. So it, it's not as easy as people think, because I've been doing that. Um, and I was doing it a lot more in the beginning of fall camp, um, but especially when I first got here, you know, my first few years here playing playing everything, and it, it's not as easy as, as people people think. Um, so that's tremendous props to, to them to be able to do that and have that position flexibility. But like I said, Coach Mirabal rotates us in at, whatever position during practice. So we got to be ready. If one guy goes down, you got to have um, a plan in place um, on how to put the next best guy in. Yeah. Is uh, what, what's your, what's your, I don't know, favorite is the right word, but if you had to say, Hey, this is where I want to play, not only the rest of my career here, but on into the NFL, well, what, what, what position would it be? Uh, honestly, I like any of the, the interior three positions. Um, you know, I, th I just I just play wherever coach honestly tells me to play. It's I, I think there's similarities to every single position, whether it's tackle, guard, center. Um, I think the most different ones are guard or sorry, center and tackle. I think those are the two like most different ones. Um, just with like pass blocking and, and run blocking, just certain techniques is a lot different. Um, but the technique techniques coach Mirabal teaches, I think the transition from guard, center, and tackle, it's all pretty much the same technique, just a little bit different footwork um, on some stuff. Um, but I, I've played I've played pretty much everything here. And I, I think I, I like center right now. Obviously, it's a new position for me um, playing in games. So I think it's – I've enjoyed it so far, um, just trying to get better at it every, every single week. Great. So uh, obviously, you guys are, have a very, very talented group of running backs. Um, I mean, it just seems like you can, you know, pretty interchangeable. You hand the ball off, and you guys are doing doing well. The, the, the yardage, you know, 270 and 270, I mean, the, the games so far, Stanford, Washington State, uh, obviously they're talented, but you guys have had to be doing a good job to get the, some of those holes opened up. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you watch on film, and so, sometimes it's kind of crazy because there won't even be that, that big of a gap. And, uh, whether it be Cyrus, uh, Travis, or CJ, wh whoever's in there, you know, finds a seam. So that they, they've got fantastic vision, all of them do. And it's, it's, it's really showing up this year. Um, 
you know, especially against teams that slant a lot um, and stamina and all that stuff post snap. Uh, you, you got to be able to find a seam, and they did a fantastic job last week um, and the week before doing that. So they they've really made us look good um, when we've made mistakes and stuff. So it's been it's been awesome to see them having a lot of success. Um, so hopefully we can, as an offensive line, we can keep on making making holes and gaps for them to to uh, go through. What do you uh, what do you do in your spare time when you're not playing football? Uh, shoot, not a whole lot, honestly. I, <laughs> during the season, I kind of just watch film and do homework mainly. Um, Good answer. Yeah, don't don't really watch a whole lot of whole lot of TV and stuff. In the off season, it's it's a little bit less busy, so I'll, I'll be playing video games and stuff with with my teammates and and all that. So that's a that's always fun. But you know, you in, in season it, it gets pretty busy, so you got to just be on top of film and, and homework so you don't fall behind. All right, the Bruins come into town. A little switching game from Friday night to Saturday now. Um, what what are, what are you guys focusing on now this week? Yeah, I mean, just just as offensive line, we we just focus on whatever our job is. So we we just got done watching film as an offensive line. Um, it's it's technically our off day today, but we all went in and, and watched some film um, on their D line. They got a really talented front seven. Um, I don't really watch a whole lot of the. The DBs or, or their their offense or anything, so we, we just try to focus on on our job and stuff. And I know Coach Moorhead will have a great um, offensive plan ready to go. Um, so we got to just go out there, practice it, and, and execute on execute on game day. Okay, last one for you. What's it like in Otson with with uh, cardboard cutouts and not sixty thousand people screaming at you? Yeah, it's it's a little weird. Um, you know when we. I think I mean the last home game that we had was last year against Oregon State. I think so. I don't know. I don't know exactly what date that was. It's probably um, it's probably a few weeks from now. It'd be it'll be a full year um, since we've had a full Watson Stadium. Um, you know, it's it, it's different. It's different. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's it's a little weird. You know, you, you miss having the fans um, screaming and stuff, and you know, not not so much when we're on offense because we got to be able to hear. But when when the other team's on offense, it's fun to fun to hear the, the fans get pretty loud and stuff and when we score and all, all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, it's just 2020 is all about adapting and, you know, getting used to your surroundings and all that stuff. So it's been, it's been a different transition. Um, but yeah, we just, you know, you got to do the right thing health wise and we, there's not a safe way to have, have fans in there. So you got to do what you got to do, but uh, we're making the best of it. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for your time, man. And uh, good luck. And obviously, Go Ducks, and uh, keep it rolling, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thanks, Alex, for the uh, interview, and good luck against the Bruins. And to all of you watching, first of all, thank you. But uh, I'm going to direct you to our auction site, GoDucksAuction.com. You'll find some great packages, autographed items, some ways to get through maybe these next two weeks as you're stuck in home. Lots of things that will help us. And remember this. It's crucial even more than ever that uh, we need you. Uh, hard to, to raise money. We ha don't have an outside auction, no golf tournaments, some of the things that are, are key to the Oregon Club. So go, uh, check out the items, uh, maybe bid, tell some other people, whatever it takes to kind of draw some people in there. We'd love to have you. Uh, if you'd just like to make a straight donation, hit the donate button. As you know, we won't be charging uh, dues this year. So it's a chance to, uh, you know, give even though it won't be in the regular way. Uh, just go to that same site, GoDucksAuction.com, hit donate, and uh, make a donation to the Oregon Club. The student athletes need you more than ever. We'd love to have you respond. I want to thank the graduate Eugene, one of our local partners, for allowing us to use their facility as our studio today. Next up, Coach Joe Moorhead, Offensive Coordinator of the Oregon Ducks. Hey, welcome to the Oregon Club uh, week two. And today's guest, Oregon offensive coordinator, brand new to our staff, Joe Moorhead. Hello, Joe. Hello, how we doing? Good, how are you? Welcome to, uh, welcome to Oregon Club. If this was our actual Oregon Club, the room would be full and they would be standing clapping for you. So just imagine that right now. Well, uh, we could do that. We'll visualize it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right, well, let's jump right into it. Uh, Lots to ask you, but let me give you just a, kind of a generic, your thoughts on uh, so far two games, Stanford, Washington State, 
on the offensive side. Just, just kind of some, you know, general thoughts there from you. No, I'm obviously great to be 2-0 as a team, so that's the most important thing. But, uh, you know, excited how we're uh, putting points on the board. We're generating explosive plays. We have a great mix of balance between run and pass right now. Uh, doing a great job converting third downs, scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Got to clean up the turnovers. Uh, so I'd say please, please, very pleased, but not satisfied by any means. All right. Hey, I, uh, I know this isn't probably on your top 10 list, but this morning on NBC uh, Sports, uh, the, the, the uh, headline read this, Oregon offense is fun again, thanks to Joe Moorhead. Oh, yeah. Cool. I know that you're probably not going, man, I, I just hope this is fun. Your, your ob, uh, objective is to put points on the board. But, boy, from a, I know from a fan standpoint, it's, it's fun to watch out there. Yeah, it's fun to coach, too. And when you uh, – obviously a very collaborative effort with the offensive staff. You know, the, the guys do a great job, you know, putting a game plan together during the week. The kids work very hard to, to, to practice it. And then, like anything, we're, we're you know, have a group of individuals working together for, for a uh, – common goal and, and, and you see success, it's very gratifying. And if it happens to be fun along the way, that's awesome too. So I, I'm glad because we're having fun. And, and I think that's an environment that Coach Cristobal creates that, that we enjoy coming to work. We enjoy going to practice and the, you know, the kids enjoy playing the game hard. So it's, it's I'm glad it's been a lot of fun to watch because it's been, it's been a lot of fun to, to uh, be a part of. Nice. So uh, let, me, let me say this, you, you brought it up, but uh, working with Coach Cristobal, how's that been so far? It's been fantastic. Uh, there's, there's no surprise why he's had success everywhere he's been uh, as a head coach and a, and a, a position coach. Uh, just a, a, a relentless recruiter, you know what I mean? And, and, and it just, just he's the whole package, right? Unbelievable culture, you know, great family man, treats the staff well, the kids respect him. And, uh, you know, the kids, you know, we perform on the field, perform in the classroom, perform in the community. So coach is, coach is a great role model and and I'm, I'm you, know, you know, proud to call him my boss. All right. I, I saw, a, uh, early on, I saw, uh, I believe it was an interview you did. You were talking with uh, some of the guys about uh, what, what you wanted to see. And one of the things you mentioned was that you, uh, you wanted to see the, uh, the backs as receivers a little more or as part of your offense. Uh, obviously, we, we've seen that. But can you uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's always been a huge staple of our offense, you know, going back to, you know, Mississippi State and Saquon and Chase Edmonds. We've always wanted the back to be able to uh, run the ball successfully, but uh, be a part of the pass game and get the ball on the perimeter. Uh, and I think that's where people mistake um, carries and touches. So it's not, it's not necessarily about the amount of times that the guy carries the ball between the tackles, but how many times can we get him the ball and create open space for him to make plays? And I think between CJ, Travis, Cyrus, and then we, we guys behind them that are, that are even capable as well. So uh, they're doing a great job when the, when the quarterback's handed them the ball off, but also, you know, as, as, a, as a, you know, receiving threat out of the backfield too, that's a huge part of making us, you know, difficult to defend in terms of the width and the, and the uh, length of the field. Yeah, and, and speaking of those running backs too, the uh, boy with a uh, a brand new five new guys basically on the offensive line, they've still been pounding the ball pretty good. Yeah, great mentality up front. You know, chip on their shoulder. You know, lost five guys, lost the Allen Trophy winner, and you know, and I, I think they like that. I think they like that challenge. You know, they've done great with their mentality, their physicality, their execution. And between Coach Mirabal and Coach Cristobal, you got two of the best in the business and coaching those guys. So. You put those things together, it's a pretty good formula for success. All right. I know that uh, to compare would be really wrong and really way too early, but you, you touched on it a little bit. You had some, uh, you coached some pretty good quarterbacks at Penn State. Uh, in fact, where, or everywhere you've been, you've had some, uh, some really good quarterbacks. You got a guy back there who's only two games in, but can you give a, uh, can you give a little synopsis of how he's done so far? Yeah, I think Tyler's done a very good job. Uh, digesting the information and the game plan during the week, you know, practicing on the field and then executing on game day. Uh, you, you love to see that he can beat you with his brains, his arms, and his legs. And when that quarterback's a threat to do both, it makes, once again, makes the, uh, the offense more difficult to defend. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, his approach, you know, coming in on his own, watching extra film, doing all those things, his leadership, I think he's really earned the respect of the guys. And uh, he's got he's got a lot of room to improve, but 
he understands that. He's very self-aware, <clears throat> and he's he's uh, you know working hard to continue to maximize his strengths and you know take some of those weaknesses and, and uh, areas to improve and, and and make them better. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, boy having a lot of targets to throw to. Uh, you, you've added that staple of the runners in the backfield coming out of there, getting, getting uh, passes, and that wide receiving core that it just seems like, uh, especially like in the Washington State game, a different guy catching a ball uh, you know, every week and, and lots of names uh, to, to spread the ball around to. Uh, helps to have a lot of guys out there that can catch, huh? Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the philosophies of the offense, dispersal of the ball to, to, to available offensive personnel. So. You can't focus on just stopping the, the run game. Can't focus in on just stopping the pass game. You know, it could go to any guy on any, any given play. And when, when the defense has to defend every blade of, every blade of grass and every, every uh, you know, eligible receiver on the field, uh, and, and we do it with balance, it, uh, it's, been a, it's been a you know, pretty positive combination for us. And speaking of receivers, uh, I got to ask, because it seems like it's kind of one of those hubs around uh, – around town people are just uh, loving DJ Johnson he moves from the other side of the ball and, and he seems to always come up in a key a key spot uh, two games now in a row yeah he's 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 done an unbelievable job from a guy that's came in here switched positions uh you know was a little bit lower on the depth chart entering camp and then when he got his opportunity he's made the most of it and people see the catches and the touchdowns and, that, and that's fantastic and we want that to continue but I think the thing that's gone a little bit unnoticed is He's been a ferocious blocker. I mean, at the point of attack, coming across on split zones, and really it has a big physical presence. So it, it, DJ's been a, you know, a guy that I, I'm proud of because he's, he's made the most of his opportunity. And, uh, you know, he's really produced. And like, once again, I think that speaks to the culture of the program that a guy that maybe wasn't necessarily expected to play a, a primary role can step in as a starter. And, and you know, nobody including himself flinched in the, in the face of adversity. Uh, speaking of that, how, how is the uh, tight end position? How are we depth-wise, I guess I should ask? We, we know there's some guys down, but, but how are we doing there? We're getting back. We're getting back to full strength. The number one question text to me all, all night since Sunday was this. What did you say to those guys at halftime in the locker room at Washington State? Uh, stop treating the football like a hot potato and we'll be in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we were marching up and down the field. I mean, had an opportunity. We scored 14 and probably could have been 28. But we, uh, you know, and one of those was my fault. I, I had a, a play called in out of a formation that, that, didn't, that didn't match. And that kind of led to the, to the, one, uh, the one fumble. But it, 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 I think, once again, it goes back to the culture of the program, that, that the guys, there was no panic. Nobody was pointing fingers. Everyone was very calm, very collected. All right, here's what we got to do. Stop turning the ball over and, uh, you know, keep – taking advantage of our opportunities offensively. And I think it was five or, five or six or maybe six or seven series in the, in the second half we scored. So the kids were cool, calm, collected. You know, we went as an offensive staff like we always do and talk about, you know, what happened and the adjustments we want to make. And I think the combination of, of game plan and culture and, and execution, you know, allowed us to have a big second half and come away with a huge win. Very good. Hey, uh, here's a, here's a, something too that I that I uh, that came in and says this. Without a long, we know that spring was interrupted. We know that uh, fall was short. As far as that, D does that affect uh, your your playbook? Have you have you cut it down? Are you looking to expand it weekly? Uh, what can we expect as we go, based on the fact that we haven't really had as much preparation as probably you'd like to in a regular season? Yeah, that's a great observation. We, we made a very conscious effort as an offensive staff to kind of hone in on what we were going to be really good at, you know, with four spring ball practices and then kind of a truncated fall camp, you really, there's things that we say, hey, we, there's a bunch of plays in the playbook that maybe we wanted to run or install, but there just wasn't, there wasn't enough time to get good at them. So we said, what are we going to hang our hat on this season? What do we want to do that one, our kids, it's not what we know, it's what the players can execute at the end of the day. So what do we run that they understand? What do we run that they're confident in? And what do we run that they can execute? And now as, as we're continuing to week three and we've had camp behind us, there's a little bit more latitude on a weekly basis to maybe tweak a play or, or, or like 
the the pin and pull scheme that, that Tyler had the long run on and scored a two point conversion on. We didn't run that in camp, but it's always been in the playbook. So once the kids start grasping and understanding, then we can we can add a little bit more every week. But we just don't you 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 don't want to you don't want it to be about plays necessarily want to be about execution so we just want to make sure there's a good balance between what we're doing and what they can execute what are you looking to improve on the offensive side of the ball what, what kinds of things do we need to uh to do a better i'd say i'd say uh, ball security is the biggest thing right now right uh and then the things that we're doing well just continue to find a way to improve and get them a little bit better uh, block and move in a little bit you know just, just some small things but i think if we could clean up the, the turnover thing that'll be the that'll be the biggest biggest uh kind of pressing issue at hand right now all right i'm gonna i'm gonna finish up i'm gonna go to the mailbag here as it were and, and uh read you some questions so uh uh here we go uh you you answered the tight end question but uh here's one you have been a highly regarded are a highly regarded in the coaching world could have had your choice of a lot of jobs you could have taken a year off uh maybe looked at another head coaching job why the decision to come to oregon yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first, my family decided I'm not a year off kind of guy. Uh, so they, they didn't think that was going to work for, for, for me or for them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I had a lot of opportunities as a, a Power 5 head coach and opportunities, Power 5 coordinator opportunities, you know, NFL ch 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 chances to enter at a lot of places. But the combination, you know, personally, professionally, and, and monetarily is third. But you know, to come to a wonderful place like Oregon where it's a great place to raise a family for them to go to school and, you know, uh, you know, not, nice place to live. And then the, the big selling point to me, aside from the kids and the players in the conference and the chance to, to win a, a, a Pac-12 championship and compete for a national championship was to work for a guy like Coach Cristobal. That, that's, that stand, he's not, it's not a bunch of fluff. It's not a bunch of BS. It's not, you know, look at me. I'm the head coach of the program. You know, this, this is a guy that, is just saying you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything this guy stands for the right things and, and you know when you come to work every day and you know the guy that you're working for stands for all the right things on and off the field made it a pretty easy decision you uh speaking of your family i know you have a a daughter i believe at u of o and a son at maris the daughter uh, daughter i believe at o'hara uh, son. Uh, son uh everybody settled in okay i, I know it's been a crazy year have you got to, got out of, at all to see Oregon or Eugene or experience the stuff as a family? Everything that we've done uh, within the, the constructs of social distancing and having masks, we've, I mean, we've eaten outside at a lot of restaurants in town and kind of enjoyed doing that. Uh, we've been to Crater Lake. We've taken the RV to a bunch of different places. We've gone to kind of some see the waterfalls. So everything that we've been able to take advantage of from this wonderful state, from a family's thing and, and stay safe, we've done. so. Hopefully everyone complies and wears their masks and we get this thing behind us so we can enjoy the rest of rest, rest of Eugene and rest of Oregon. Okay, okay, you brought it up here, and I'm assuming this question, uh, I don't know if he knows you or if he just knows the story, but he said, hey, ask Coach if he has any RVing tips for after being a first-timer and taking a 46-hour drive across the United States. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, make sure make sure when you uh, when you're uh, screwing in the, the the black tank to empty it, make sure it's all the way on. Make sure it's not hanging off. That, that's a good one. Very good tip. Okay. Because everything else after that is gravy. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you had a good experience. But uh, well, okay. So as we close, what what are we looking for? Uh, UCLA, obviously, they had a kind of a quick game against Cal. Uh, uh, let, you know, kind of a one day notice. Let's play the game uh, as things will happen in the Pac-12, I'm sure, this year. But uh, what, what, uh, what are we looking for to do uh, in that game on Saturday now instead of Friday? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, C Coach Kelly and his staff are, are, are very, you know, well-respected. and He's done an unbelievable job everywhere he's been. And uh, we have to prepare for a very quality opponent. But as Coach talks about all the time, we've got to worry about Oregon. So, you know, we'll put a, we'll put a game plan together. You know, we'll make sure it's sound and it's something that the kids you're confident in and they can execute with physicality and, and precision, you know, go through our process during the week. And, you know, it, it's as much about performing against a standard, you know, as opposed to against an opponent. And if our kids are working to the standard that coaches set every day uh, and, and our one and no process, usually things take care of themselves on Saturdays. 
I, I know that you probably want to be able to play in front of a, uh, uh, you've probably heard, uh, a full Autzen Stadium is a fun, fun place to be. Uh, but is there, a, is there a positive of maybe, hey, I can yell out a, uh, a play and they can actually hear me because the 56,000 people aren't screaming their heads off? Yeah, you get some things communicated that probably wouldn't, you know, otherwise be the case. And, uh, and I've heard all the, you know, I I'm excited to get fans back in the stadium because, you know, I I've heard all the stories. You know, one of my best friends from back home in Pittsburgh played his ball at Stanford. You know, he told me what it was like coming here. And he said, you call it the loudest stadium that he, he had been in in the pack. So, uh, you know, there's some benefits to being able to communicate, but I don't think any of those outweigh kind of the, the, um, the experience of having a full stadium and, and kind of getting our kids energized and really what it does for the school and the community, you know? Yep. Well, Coach, th thanks for being uh, with us, spending your time. Uh, th welcome again to, uh, to Oregon and the Oregon Club, and uh, we appreciate uh, your, you. We love your offense, and uh, good luck against the Bruins. Awesome. Thank you very much. Go Ducks. All right. All right.